What is going on, everyone? I am Rob. I am Eamon. This is Monster Fuzz. We missed an opportunity, Eamon. Oh. Uh, where's your bangers? And mash. Oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, it's Eamon's birthday, everyone. Woo! It's Eamon's birthday. Thank you. He, Today is actually my it's birthday. It's his birthday yeah, today. My third this day of release. There you go. There you go. Exploding. Right. So, uh, three, two, two one. Oh, hey. happy birthday That's to Eamon. What a time to be alive. <laughs> um, yeah, Eamon, 40. How do you feel? Uh, not too dissimilar to how I felt. Yeah. I don't know. Um, wise? No. No, no, no certainly not wise. wise. If anything, I think there's a degradation <laughs> there's in my grey yeah. matter. Um, yeah, it's weird, man. It's, maybe it helps me a little bit because my wife's a couple of years older than yeah. me. So, like... No matter what happens, I can be like, you you're old, like me and you, you old bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You look at me well, and you'll be like, Whoa. it's actually funny now, though, because I was only thinking about this earlier. I'm the age you are now that you were when we started this pod. So, yeah, because there's a four yeah. year difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So. So how do you think I've changed for the better or the worse <laughs> in the last four years? Uh, I'd say better, probably. Yeah, better. I think we to know. I think it's we're pretty stable. Yeah, characters. it's been a good four like, years. Like yeah, like we, we, we don't change much. Were you were you going out with Kira when we started this podcast? Yeah, yeah. So we've we've maintained our relationships. Fair we've bought us. houses with those Fair those us. terrible women. <laughs> um, Look at how far we've come. Yeah, we're Amazing. actually, you know, good. Yeah, we're doing all right. Like. Good men. So we're doing all right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, happy birthday to Eamon. We actually recorded a, a Patreon exclusive mm. where I surprised him and he had no idea. I had no idea. That I was hitting you up with all this shit. He gave me some cool stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which was very cool. Got a nice cake and a bit of an old steam deck. A bit of a steam deck, yeah. yeah. A sec- the cake was in the shape of a steam deck. That's so, <laughs> uh, not true. <laughs> but no, yeah, it was very cool. And obviously, again, mm. to any of our listeners that contributed to that uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah, it was all cute. Like I, I, uh, I was playing all like, oh, it's your birthday this week. Is oh, it? Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I was like, oh shit, I forgot my iPad. I may run into the other room. You keep recording there and doing your thing. So I brought in the cake. Well. And, yeah, uh, yeah, good, yeah. Good and like, like I sort of never expect anything from anyone. So like, <laughs> I kind of get like a lamp rabbit. Like, like oh, ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, you deserved it. As I said, on the you're very good thing. to do. You deserve to do it when and you're forty. Enjoy it. It'll be unbelievable. Oh yeah, the best, the, the best things time. I do for you <laughs> when you're 40. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing well. Hope you're having a good day. We would like to remind everyone, if you could, to leave reviews. That's much appreciated. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, bell notification, all that jazz. Uh, it does help. And if you want to do a little bit more, head on over to the Patreon. You'll see Eamon getting surprised with cake. I mean, who doesn't want to see that, right? And you'll get access to literally four years worth of exclusive episodes. So you yeah. talk um, 50-something episodes now, probably more. Awesome. Yeah, Jesus, we probably do. Yeah, yeah, the rate of one a month, uh, and sometimes two a month. So yeah, the, yeah, rarely two a month, but we have done two a month in the past. And very rarely none a month, but no. we always catch up yeah, on ourselves. We do. So you can pay for two months uh, for the year if you like, and you get two months for free as well. So check it out. Eamon, if they got any cryptid encounters mm. or anything like that, we're if just you got in. any stories for us. Uh, Monsters Podcast at Gmail dot com. Uh, we have some stories today. Um, one from Adam. Uh, mm, not quite a story. Persia. But- uh, which isn't a spooky mm. thing or a story yet. Which, but again, if there's something you want to write in that I think is in some way you want to mm-hmm. share with people either on the Patreon, in the Discord, or it's something that's personal to you that you want to share, mm-hmm. you know, we're always, we're, we're about that life. Uh, and then Chadwick as well writes in and we got a load of questions. So Yeah, yeah. Today we're going to handle a bunch of Patreon questions as well. Shout out to the patrons for that too. So Adam writes in, Adam is the Prince of Persia, and he just says, Wagwan Shaggers. Um, for our listeners that don't realise, Adam has been on both of our hike meetups actually with mm. us and so, he came over and to the live show the yeah live show, so yeah. we've actually seen adam quite a few times uh, he says wagwan shaggers you mentioned you'll be doing a mental health fuzz episode yeah we did that it's on patreon right now and world mental health day is on october 10th i thought i'd share a little about my own experience which i think i've talked with you guys about on the hike you have done yet yeah? having spent a lot of my late teens puffing on that bad cabbage To being completely dependent throughout my 20s, essentially self-medicating for undiagnosed PTSD, depression and OCD, and a nice dose of health anxiety thrown in there. 
ultimately led to a full mental breakdown in September of 2021. Brain completely mel- melted like that geezer <laughs> who opened the Ark of the Covenant. Um, Adam always has a bit of brevity and humour to, to this yeah, kind of stuff yeah. as well, which is always nice. But uh, it actually sounds like he struggled a lot. It sounds like he's got like both of our mental health problems like coming together. <laughs> into it's one. A, yeah, it's like a fucking Thanos kind of thing, you know. But um, yeah, so he was basically saying... At a point, his intrusive thoughts were telling him that he was going insane and there was no way back. One day came where it was either just check out of the bullshit or admit out loud my brain was broken and I needed help, professional help. Rebuilding everything again from a blank slate and kind of relearning how to be a real human. I still don't know what that is, but... And throughout all of that, every Monday and Thursday, you lads were putting on, uh, putting out absolutely spooky nonsense, which helped on those really shit days. Uh, glad we could be of service. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. A good or spooky story or a questionable Bigfoot sighting with Mickey Jokes and Jordan Peterson <laughs> exfoliating what Ron means can be the thing that makes a shit day better. Um, so, on the topic of mental health, I'm going to be running 62 miles, fair play, that's a lot, throughout October to raise money for the charity Campaign Against Living Miserably. Any contribution is appreciated. Lots of love, Prince of Persia. So, first off, I'll put the link in the episode notes. I'll put the link on Instagram stories. We have already contributed to this cause. Mm -hmm. Um, So, the Campaign Against Living Miserably, Emin, is? Uh, The Campaign Against Living Miserably is to help people end misery rather than ending their lives. So, it's a suicide prevention um, and, I suppose, Mm -hmm. all-round group to help each other with their own mental battles and anguish. Um, yeah. So yeah. So basically, I think Adam was saying to me, he was saying something like something in the region of like eleven fifty or twelve fifty. Actually, um, it's what was he saying? It was like basically, it's a person answering the phone. That's how much the call costs. So like twelve fifty will prevent hopefully a bad Someone, thing. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's the cost of the. Absolutely. He said it in a better way than I, I processed it, yeah. but that's basically the, the case. Like, like <clears throat> all these things, and looked at that part he's saying there about sort of feeling that you were going crazy because mm-hmm. the weed turned against you. I don't want to be anti-weed or anything, but my story of a breakdown was a very, very similar. Yeah, likewise. Where for years I wasn't quite there. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of depersonalization mm-hmm. where I just yeah. felt like a big layer of Vaseline mm-hmm. between me and the world. I couldn't really feel or see. But yeah, it's it's an awful experience. But look, um, what what because we didn't have podcasts when that happened to me. No. Or they were, it was like the Carl Pilkington, like yeah, it was yeah, super was new back time. then, right? Yeah, yeah. But for me, what used to help was watching uh, old wrestling yeah. DVDs. And right. that used to, like, get me a case get of out here. <laughs> Get out of here, you! His, I didn't, we didn't know about him back then. <laughs> no. uh, that might have been worse for my mental health. Um, but yeah, no, it's really good. People do say it to us. And we have that experience with various things that we listen to. Or, or whatever media we, we consume mm-hmm. or video games we play. But it's a, it's a lovely thing. I've always said to Rob... It's probably one of the nicest compliments we can get that someone listening to the show can just have a less shitty day or for an hour just have a bit of a laugh and, and not feel whatever they're going through. So The moments that have been most important with the podcast for me have been moments where someone has said something like what Adam is saying there. Yeah. Um, and that's, and I think why is almost because it's by accident, number one. Mm-hmm. It's like we're not, that's not our modus operandi for this podcast. But also number yeah. two um we feel that same way at times yeah so it's like yeah for one we we're gr- we're so glad that we have someone out and then also yeah we know what that's like so it's yeah we can get we we get it and you know as well, I mean? over the years we've been in the pocket with each other when yeah one of us is having yeah shit time an awful time and yeah especially when we were probably younger yeah like you talk through yeah. i remember you sitting in my kitchen you'd gone through a breakup oh, like you were just like oh, this is like manic depression yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was like sorry dude and it's it, a lot of it is you know so i guess when we're shooting off the hip and having the crack we we've physically been there with each other if you were there when i went through my breakup and like it's yeah it's a good thing man i'm i'm really glad that that i don't know people can get something like that out of this and uh, Adam, super cool yeah. dude. We've met him three times now. Top shagger. Every time. Top, top shagger, shagger, yeah. Top shagger. Guy. I was so happy that I went uh, on my cousin's 
stag that was what we were all calling each other top shaggers yeah, yeah. and he ran with it like so it's, <laughs> it's pretty good yeah so um yeah I'll, I'll put the links for all that and if anyone can spare a few bob or if it's anyone that's gone on the hike so just knows adam personally uh drop a few bob um yeah it would be appreciated too. i think he already met his first goal that he set um and so now he's kind of raised the bar a little bit to kind of hit another goal so uh, it would be great if people can contribute um yeah and that's about it so chadwick gales writes in and if you want to take yes. it away Chadwick says, hey guys, it's Chadwick. So this is a weird one. One day last year I was out once again looking for Bigfoot. It was in the same place where I found the three-toed tracks. You were talking to yeah. about that, actually, weren't you? Yeah, Did yeah. you talk about the woman with bird legs? Yeah, he was getting into that kind of... He didn't say the woman with bird legs, but he was like, there's three-toed ta- tracks to shop with Bigfoot. And then I was like, yeah, I had to be like, isn't that funny how that all this weird stuff happens <laughs> alongside Bigfoot? <laughs> Just anything people fight, that's weird. Yeah. Like, my car won't start. My car is not starting as a common occurrence near Bigfoot. Uh, I was about a mile or so up the creek in a very old cemetery that is in the woods on a mountainside. I was making a video for my YouTube channel. So I was talking and I heard what sounded like a very large person walking on the other side of the brush, on the far side of the cemetery. So I started talking more and acted like I didn't hear it. As I was walking down to the cemetery, I could hear this thing, whatever it was, walking the whole time. As I got back down to the cemetery, I panned the camera over and caught two branches breaking like it took two steps. I run across the cemetery cemetery to see if I can see what it was and there was nothing there i got this all on video and i believe i sent it to rob on instagram this was one of the strangest things that has ever happened to me but it was really cool at the same time hope you guys have a great day until next time thanks no no spooky i can't remember that clip in particular chadwick so send it back to me because i have like on our there's like shouts out to all of them by the way i don't know how they are there's about like eight what I would call power users on Instagram <laughs> who literally send me like like 12 Apple plus 12 <laughs> plus videos a day. Whoa. Oh yeah, yeah. What? Oh yeah, yeah. God no. Damn. Master Files does be lit down in the DMs. Right, like, okay. But okay. it's just videos. I'm like, I can't watch all of them unfortunately as much as I'd like to. So what I do is some of them I'll, if it's like a, a cryptid or something, I'll get a laugh out of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, send it on again, Chadwick, and I'll, I'll give it a look because it's lost in the sea of madness. A lot mm. of time it'll be like, remember like Bigfoot Bay, the female Bigfoot going around and stuff. Was that her name? I think it was Bigfoot Bay. Oh, was it? yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Sax Watch, you know, yeah, a lot of stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, all that pops up, which, you know, I love it. Keep sending it, by the way. But yeah, the power users have got me. You know, uh, so we're on the patron questions. Uh, if you want to ask questions, you have to be a patron. We don't want to hear from you otherwise. So I don't know if we're talking about you. Paddy from Wexford, Wexford Zone, Paddy the Baddy asks, when will you be bringing back your trademark poems and trivia quiz? Yeah. Well, you know, we've talked about this before and I have said I'll add it soon and I keep forgetting. Uh, it's literally a question of just falling out of habit. Yeah. Um, so soon, I guess, when I remember to do them again. Uh, what it is, is I tell you, we've you and i have gotten into a kind of a routine now where this yeah where like i fire out the mini fuzz the day of when we're recording and you will generally do the notes maybe a day before mm-hmm. and you'll send them on so like before i used to have all that done that used to be done like maybe a week before or in advance by quite a long time right. so on that day the you monday i'd have a bit of mental energy i go oh yeah i'll do it a poem i'll do whatever but like uh, now would it be oh I'll sit down and do mini fuzz so it's literally just the thing where I have to reprogram myself to get back into the habit of doing it that's all it's literally that it's it's nothing crazy and as well I have said it before too that you know variety is the spice of life you don't want to fall into a pocket too much of being that podcast that does that same thing mm. over and over and over again so um, I just wanted to kind of give it a break as well for a while and then he also asks <laughs> would you rather pubes for teeth or teeth for pubes <laughs> it's like classic monster fuzz oh, wow. you go on like a serious kind of thing and then you're like pubes for teeth or teeth for pubes what would you rather you know what would you say uh, <laughs> I suppose right <clears throat> let's think of it logically if you can get the pubes for teeth can you get awesome. I guess it's either urologist sick. work or dental <laughs> work sick. can you get it's it's absolutely disgusting <laughs> but could you get them removed and like lasered so you're not going to grow hair in there and get like fake teeth because then you have at least no teeth on your Mickey. Like, but, like, if you had teeth on your pubes, spot, it would be almost like that, you know. 
Like, yeah, it'd be like a horror movie. Wanna get licked? No, no. If you're, if, you're, <laughs> if you're packing heat enough, like you're making, you'd be standing tall above the teeth. Like, obviously. yeah, but like the hair would be like if each individual hair was like a oh, tooth. Yeah. Well, no, I'd imagine now it's just like a, it looks almost like a corn on the cob of teeth. Could you paint your Mickey like red and it yeah, looks like venomous yeah, mouth? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> We are <laughs> dental pubes. Um, like Cletus Cassidy. Cletus Cassidy, yeah. Because it, it would be carnage. Like I think I'd sooner that because you know, you know, we might find something a bit like but you can know, a you bit get of a rubbing pad there down teeth? there, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I don't know. <laughs> I think like teeth where your erogenous zone is just few more really in like the right you. position now. I'd rather I mean? teeth in my arsehole than either of those oh, if I could stop. avoid it. Like because do you know, if anything, they can help break down the nasty shits. I think I'd take, I just, the thought of a mouthful of pubes is just no, absolutely it's terrible, disgraceful. Like, it's, that's more of a long-term a plan because you can, like, get some laser surgery, get some dentures in. Whereas, can, can you just get the teeth extract? Can they get cavities? That's yeah, I don't thing. know. We don't know the rules, man. We had Big ass pissy teeth down <laughs> on your face. That's horrible. Why do people come up with these questions? It's not what I need to hear on my 40th birthday. I'm halfway through life. Still talking about big toothy Mickey's like. It's hilarious. Because like, that is like the evergreen content you would have been talking about when you're 12. And, <laughs> and now we're here. Yeah. Do, you know, <laughs> do, like, do you know when you look back on like your Facebook post from like 30 years oh, ago yeah, and you yeah. just go, Ugh, oh yeah, gotcha. this podcast is going to be so like much that. worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so like much that. worse. I must, yeah. Must as an exercise go back and listen to some of the early ones just to say, because that's been four years. Like it's a long If time. anything, we've gotten worse. Like, yeah, probably. If anything, we've, we've probably devolved and become more mm, immature. Probably. Yeah, probably. We're all like, Big Mickey's uh, not. I get sad uh, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Big Mickey's. And, like, we're ridiculous. The people. duality of man. <laughs> the <humans>. um, <laughs> Dav or Dave from Crypties writes in Emma. He does. He says, You could get a magic app for your phone that gives you all the answers if ghosts really exist, UFOs are real or not. Uh, Patterson Gimlin, real Bigfoot, or a mate in an impressive suit. Do you want it, or would you rather it remain a mystery? That's a very good question. It is. So basically, yeah. If 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 you if you could have the An if you could get to access you to Roswell, if you could like talk to Patterson and Gimlin with a lie detector and get the proper answers, would you rather? Would you want to know, or are you better off leaving? I think I would want to know. Yeah. I'm trying to weigh it up in my head, like the reason you come across yeah. new stuff, yeah. And if only you had the app, and you were yeah. like, "Is uh, <laughs> is that real?" Well, the reason I think it, it doesn't really matter whether it's real or not is because the vast majority of people I think that are into crypto cryptozoology, maybe I'm giving them too many, much credit here, but I think the vast majority probably are in the camp of like, "No, it's probably not real," right? So, like. With that in mind, I probably disagree on that. Do you think point. so? I'd say the vast majority of people who are into cryptozoology, maybe not the vast majority, but I'd say there's a size. True, if they're into are, it, yeah, you're right. Yeah, like, you're right. Like again, it's, it's, I'm wrestling. I'm fighting back metaphysical bigfoot yeah, every day. Yeah, I mean? no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think it's inconsequential if that stuff gets proven to be fake. Is all I'm going to say. Because like. Mm. The idea it already sort of is in a way. But well, look at the amount of like Bigfoot stuff we've talked about over the years. Look at the amount of um like folkloric stories about Bigfoot that existed before. Yeah, Patrick like, like you do if you're if I put on my cynical hat. Oh yeah, your cynical hat. There's my cynical hat. Yeah. You would say, "Well, how come no one's ever found Bigfoot?" Or blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you go one of two ways. You yeah. go one way is like, well, because there is no Bigfoot, mm. or you fucking go balls and want to go. He's a metaphysical yeah, representation, yeah. and it's amazing that that is such a big camp mm. of Bigfoot. I'd be curious to know what the thoughts were on metaph metaphysical representations of like forest spirits or whatever mm -hmm. prior to the Patterson Gimlin footage. And I have oh, no yeah. idea. Do you know what I mean? Like high enough. You think so, yeah? Fairies, fae, pixies. Yeah. But I, I would have always thought that the fae and the fairies, like I never even as a kid really believed they were real. Now, probably as a 40-year-old man who's halfway through his life, <laughs> is more inclined to believe that the fae is an actual, <laughs> the some sort of a... Trickster and yeah. like a thing. 
No, but I, I think it, there was a point in time where Irish people believed in it. There certainly was, yeah. Yeah, so... so but I'm, I'm curious, like, I was... I'm thinking more, like, the 1960s or, like, what was the zeitgeist of cryptozoology? It was... I think it was... It went farther back to, like, the early uh, 20th century, mm. where, like... When they were looking for McKelly and Bembe yeah, and stuff like I that. I think yeah. that was because, like, that was at a time where, you know, newspapers started to fully become there a thing. There was still a possibility. TV that. was like, TV wasn't really there, but newspapers were definitely a thing. Mm. And there was still frontiers, more or yeah. less. And there was a lot of places that were very wild. And there was still a lot of cultures that weren't fully explored. So, like, I think that they captured that. And I think part of the human psyche is what if there is something weird out there? Mm. What if there's something unlike anything we've ever seen? And I think that's why cryptozoology will always be a thing, because I think it's just part of human nature. But yeah. eventually, 200 years from now, cryptozoology will probably be in a dark place on Earth, because, you know, you'll have talked about, about everything. But then, like, you know, motherfuckers get to Mars, man. Just think about the cryptids on Mars. Those rock Wait, spiders. A whole new, whole new thing of cryptids on Mars, like... You know what I mean? Well, like, yeah. But even the crypt, like, the fact, like, if you look at what's going on with UAPs, mm -hmm. like, I finished that book, Imminent. Oh, yeah. And... I contacted him to get him on the podcast, and... He when didn't I, like that we said he was in the... No, no, when, when, when <laughs> Louis Concarney. When I... When I, <laughs> when I contacted him... Like no, no, he did the fucking switcheroo, like, the flim flam. When I contacted him, like, via his contact page on his website, it just signs you up for a newsletter. You're like, all right, cool. Yeah. I uh, know, fair play. No, I think... <laughs> I You're think, like, oh, I, don't like think, I don't think he'll be he'll be coming on. Ah, man, them lads love coming on to anything. I'm talking about, but anything. like all it like they do like what, like it's, love a, it's a real fun book. Like. But like the fact that this is the thing that has been investigated and released, yeah. like that dude is like, yeah, remote viewing, hundred percent, like a lot of. Oh, but, right. but when he talks about like all the CIA stuff, mm. you're kind of going, all right, well, is it like? Like because yeah. the UAPs, it's all woven together. Like it's it's a uh, it's worth checking out. I think it was actually. I think it was one of the times you were away. Me and Tom did a all oh, time man. Yeah, a bit yeah. of remote view and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think it was on like yeah. a mini fuzz. Men who stare at ghosts. Yeah, that, that kind of thing. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's that like. I don't just know. even when you said it to me, I was like, oh yeah, fuck. I remember talking about that with Tom. Yeah, it's been a while since we fucking. We should, we should get Tom back on. Tom years. For a bit. Yeah, it's very um. I don't know. It's peculiar. The fa like, but it is the fact that like all this sort of disclosure, if you like, and the disclosure is imminent. Mm -hmm. If you had something similar, it's just there's no real. It doesn't matter if Bigfoot and all are real. Do you know what no. I mean? Whereas the aliens, you're kind of like, all right, this seems a bit more. Serious. There's a great video. I was talking about this to. I don't know if it was Tommy or Tim. But uh, there's a video, again, I'm fucking butchering, I can't remember it. But basically, the crux of it is that it's just as likely that there's nothing out there as there is that there's something out there. It's just mm -hmm. as likely because we don't have any evidence of anything existing outside well, see, of that. See, that's kind of the thing is he doesn't say these are aliens. Mm -hmm. And in fact, a lot of the stuff from the book is you're going, oh, okay, like interdimensional, like oh, yeah, I'll find they out entertain the a lot of crazy stuff. Sure, I'll which be, sure, you'll know, yeah, you know every I mean? week. <laughs> Every oh, week, you know, now, like, every week you'll have a link. So Just if you buy captured. the book once, will the newsletter stop? No, no, it'll never, never stop. stop. Newsletters never stop, man. Freddie Terrible writes in and asks if you were to emigrate to any country in the world, where would it be and why? I feel like we've answered this before. Japan, Japan, yeah. probably. Just like video games. Yeah, I think like. Oh, I, I was, I, you know, I've said it before as well, Wales, probably North Wales. I mean, it sounds to some people that might be like, why are you going to North Wales? But like, I love Snowdonia. It is kind of a strange sort of like Japan yeah, yeah. or North <laughs> Wales is kind of a weird sort of, of collection. Like, depressing. Yeah. Like run down seaside towns up in North Wales. No, no. I think Snowdonia is one of the, in my opinion, I've been to a yeah, lot of places, places now in my old ass fucking bitch age. I've been to fucking a lot of places, and I do think I still maintain that Snowdonia is one of the most beautiful spots I've been to. Still, I th I actually think scenery, scenery wise, I prefer North Wales, like like that area, Snowdonia, to some of the places I was at in Japan. You know, like I really do like it. No, that's um, I'm biased, obviously, because I was there as a kid, and there's probably that kind of thing there. But like, there's places that like we haven't gone to that are really nice up there as well, like Bala, the lake, mm. and stuff. It's real cool. It's actually where the IRA were started was in Bala. So between a choice of Bala or Bali, uh, we choose Bala. Uh, but <laughs> Japan, Japan, yeah. I, I, 
sooner go to Japan than North Wales. I think Japan has so much variety. Not that, like, don't yeah. get me wrong, banger away. Man, North Wales, you got the banger, you got the fucking Slam Dudden, you know, <laughs> you got Snowden. Pretty, pretty you good. You got the Betsy Cold. I think the amount of stuff that Japan has to offer would be, even the fact that you can, like, pay a lad money and just sit in a booth mm-hmm. indefinitely. Oh, yeah. There's people who, like, if you miss the last bus home, the best thing you can probably do is just pay the lad money to yeah. sit in an internet booth and yeah. Definitely don't bring in a black light. No. Uh, do and just read manga or fall asleep. Japan is like, I hate cities. Like, I was always of the mind if I hate cities, but in reality, I just don't like Dublin much. Um, Which is understandable. Like, yeah. like, like I love any of the Spanish cities I've been to. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is like totally my fucking vibe. Like, totally. Live. Actually, I would live in Spain as well. You know? Yeah. I live in yeah. Seville or Valencia. Portugal, I could live in Portugal yeah, yeah. as well. I like Portugal. Yeah. So any of those places? Actually, I'd, I I wouldn't mind. Like at some point in my life, me and Paula are wedded for life. So yeah. maybe when we're like old, yeah, we can just like rent out the house here for six yeah. months, live in Brazil. Well, you get murdered in Brazil, so don't do that. Now we live. You in will. Spe- we live in different places. We won't live in Sao Paulo. Yeah, you're like, a mark, like you're a big parts, white ass. Pa- I have like the burzar. Every mark. every fucked up clip on the internet is from Brazil. <laughs> yeah, but I'd be able to speak fluid, fluid, yeah, fluid so you'll Portuguese. Be to, you'll be able to tell the robbers, don't say, shoot me in Portuguese. Sorry, disculpa, disculpa. <laughs> Did you see that clip where the lads came along? I don't know if I sent it to you. They ran on, on a moped. And they just pulled him over. And no, they pulled a the gun on him. And yeah. uh, he grabs the gun off him. He was an off duty police. Cut, I just shot your man. Shot him dead off the back of the moped. Mm. So it's like, yep, yeah, there you go. Maybe like John Wick. No, the point uh, John Wick of <laughs> Sao Paulo going around the place wrecking lads and all. <laughs> Turning sideways and the bullets flying past yeah. your arse. <laughs> That'd be the thing. They'd be like, how can a man exist with such a small arse? Like I would li- I'd literally have the smallest arse oh, yeah. outside of like children. <laughs> I have the smallest arse in all of Brazil. <laughs> possibly all yeah, of Latin possibly, America. Yeah, possibly, man. You know, pretty yeah. fucking sick. Be a, a, 30 a years of... from now, ladies and gentlemen, if this podcast is <laughs> Yeah. I'll be doing it from me little yeah. favela. <laughs> <The> favela, yeah. <laughs> Live from the favela. Um, yeah, so I think we're both of a similar yes, mind. Yes. Connor Nor writes in Emma. Would you consider do would you consider going on a site ghost <laughs> investigation? Right. Would you consider on doing site. on yeah. yeah? Would you consider doing an on site investigation? For now, Halloween special. Get into Leap Castle or somewhere and try to contact the elemental. Yes. Yeah, we definitely, we will do that. Um, we So we have the cameras. We mm-hmm. have the people, i.e. myself and you. We have the location. Yeah. Because uh, remember out in Loftus Hall the, where we went to that spooky talk with my sister. Oh, yeah. Uh, she was very brave asking questions. And all. Oh, yeah, she's she was like, what do you think about them selling the hotel? Ooh, can we get Anna on actually over Halloween? Yeah, Anna yeah. be in first. Yeah. Anna actually has a legitimately... Yeah, we'll get her on. Scary story. We'll get her on for, we'll ladies. get her on for yeah. a mini photos on the lead up. She'll, she'll come up, she'll come up. Yeah, yeah, we'll I'll do that. pick her up and bring her down here. Now. Yeah, I'll just buy another mic as well, maybe. You can bring one down. Yeah. Well, something like that. Right, yeah, we'll do that then. That'll be good. There and yeah, go. like, honestly, look, the only thing that's stopping us really is like sitting down, writing out what we want it to be. Cause like, you can't just go up and go, where are we are, lads, Yeah, do I'd like know? to, I'd like to go to, um, I'd like to do the history of Carrick Forest in Carrick Forest. All and right. Just see how we do that. Because, like, yeah. we can do it in the graveyard. Walking out from behind trees and yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well, well. Hello. Hi. It'd be, like, nationwide, <laughs> yeah. but just with our two stupid asses. Yeah, yeah, no, we could do Carrick, but yeah. We could, actually, we could actually sit there and do a podcast about the history of Carrick. Yeah, yeah. And the ghost tales of Carrick in the graveyard of Carrick. Yeah, yeah. The only thing is, like, the audio quality probably won't be. I know. No, well, we've, got, we've, got, no, no, we've yeah. got proper mics. Um, Does that thing have battery in it? Declan has it? proper mics. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, he, I, think, I think he has lapel mics. We'll get help. We'll have a little, have a little help. help from my friends. So Hayley McCartney writes in and says, what cryptid or idea would you pitch to Gordo to get the lads back together <laughs> on a podcast episode again? Mm, true question. Um, what would we have to do to entice Gordo? Um, he did say, like, he was supposed to come on when Eamon was away, but he snubbed me. So I'm going to try again now soon. I think we need something... Like with Gordo, you kind of need to give him something that he's interested in, or else he's just not interested. So it has you to be just annoy him. Yeah. What happened to Paul? <laughs> episode? He, 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 he wouldn't like that. Where is he? Is he? <laughs> the, the mystery he, of Paul. He's, 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 what the fuck? If we did that, he'd like fall out with us forever. And now, and, uh, like, now there's a part of me that really wants to because it's, just it's like, kind of a, just like a ten page. <laughs> yeah. Notes on what? 
Some people think. It's no, it was nothing. He just wasn't. He just wasn't really into it anymore. Like, um, yes, I. So there, <laughs> when we get it back. Uh, hopefully he doesn't listen to this episode. Uh, I don't mean I don't say any of that would hate my heart. That no, was no. just the funniest thing yeah, to yeah, say well, to that question. Funny. Uh, no, we will. We'll get him back on. He um, actually surprised us with Jabba Fofi because yeah. of all the things we gave him more <laughs> sort of conspiratorial yeah. based episodes, but uh, he went for the giant spider. Um, I think he's getting his mojo back. I think he's starting mm, to put out episodes. Seems to be, so seems to be I out think slinging. Gordo is very much the type of person. I'm not going to speak too much for him, but from what I understand of Gordo, he's the type of person that he likes to have momentum going. He likes to have something to talk about when he comes on the podcast. He likes to be in the mix when he's putting out. He likes to be putting out his own shit and doing other podcasts all at once. Like that's like when he gets mm. into that mode. So hopefully soon enough. Yeah, maybe maybe and lead up to Halloween. Who knows? Um, we'll put out the word. Like I said. Uh, we actually talked about this on on uh, the Patreon episode, but like, um, you know, there are, we have a lot of collaborators that we can just call upon and they're available straight away. So generally those are the first that I'd give a shout to. Gordo on the other hand, yeah, he does need a bit more notice mm-hmm. and a more of a tailor-made episode. So sometimes that's just why he hasn't been yeah. on. So <clears> hopefully sometime soon to answer your question. Emma, Mickey Slipper writes Mickey in. Mickey Slipper looks uh, outside of Wexford, where else in Ireland would you choose to live? People love where we want to live. Mm. Outside of Wexford, um, I would say most places around the coast, except for Dublin. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> most of like places, Tremor, Waterford. Right? I definitely, yeah, I practically have lived there in the past. But even Cork, I lived in Cork for a while. I liked Cork, Kerry. I think would be pretty cool. Don't know um, about Kerry now. I like it, but it's too far from everything. Mm. That's the only thing I don't That's like. True. About it's true. It's a. It's a like fair. if you want to fly up to Dublin, like what you want to fly from Dublin, you got to get like a four hour train yeah, or whatever. Or the yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I think. Um, but I do like the scenery. I would. I haven't really spent much much time in the West. No. And I feel like I wouldn't like it. Oh yeah, interesting. From, just be from a, a remote point of view. Yeah. I think it's like anywhere along the coast. I'm cool with. I'm not mad into kind of. Kara's favorite is over there. She, over the west yeah, yeah she loves Claire and all that shit yeah and it's understandable because they are beautiful yeah. like the the Wexford coast compared compared to the kind of western coast is mm. quite different there's a couple of nice spots like hidden spots in Wexford along the coast that you wouldn't mm. realise they actually do have a like, I wouldn't say like a super dramatic coastline but like nice rugged kind of yeah, wild yeah, like yeah. even down like near um, St. Helens Beach there down there true, there. true true like if you walk down there's like a bit of a coast walk down along there but that is kind of rugged like. yeah true I think it's like if you compare it to Connemara, because out that side you have those old sort of yeah, stone yeah. walls mm-hmm. and, you know, Wexford doesn't have as no. much of that. The West, the West is a very, the West is like an older version of Ireland. To hell or to Connacht. Yeah. Not enough water <laughs> to drown a man, nor a tree high enough to hang a man. It's all the fucking Shout killing dudes. No, nor enough bullets to <laughs> shoot a man. Like, he's just fucking miserable little fucking uh, fiend. Um... Yeah, the West is definitely fantastic, and mm. I love driving through and checking it out. Yeah. But and when you yeah. speak of folklore and stuff, the yeah. West has yeah. and per capita. I met I met someone on the weekend, and I told him I was from Wexford, and he said Wexford per capita has more mental people than any other county. Fuck in that Ireland. bitch! Waterford definitely has way more. Yeah, and I, I well, I was kind of going. I think the West per capita yeah. probably has a Galway. More. Again, sure, going around yeah. dressed like fucking more bags in Galway. <laughs> fucking weirdos. <laughs> I thought about Go Wexford. Bridge. Wexford does have quite a high per capita. I would I'd say. say Waterford, man. Any, I'd say Waterford. Anyone that I've met out of Waterford, like back back. Well, in my technically, time. I'm from Waterford. Yeah, technically, my blood is all like. Waterford, and you probably are there. <laughs> there must be some sort of link <laughs> for you and Waterford. Um, when the Billingtons <laughs> ship landed, it been docked in Waterford Harbour. <laughs> uh, no, no, Waterford. Like all respect to Waterford, but like crazy people. Yeah, mm. like I don't think Wexford is too far behind. Like no, but but I do. I would tend to agree with you. Um, and most, I most the of lads are more for around the hash and all. Like yeah, most of them. Like yeah, that's true. Most, <laughs> like, of, that's, most that of them around the hash. Now most of the lads in Wexford. To be fair, the hash yeah. is the least of your troubles now. Lads are going around the cocaine on the bag. Is the big yeah, one. On the sad bag. really boring fucking drug. It's a mad though, like, dull like, drug for do- dull people. Yeah, to be fair. You could say the same about... Nah, Hash is class, man. Hash is Ray class. Adams, Remember no. lads just like, but sure, look, heroin. Yeah, right there, the Adams. And I'd say cocaine, as lad Tiesto's probably doing like cocaine, <laughs> was he? Lines on fucking Ableton. No, no, he'd be in the berries now. He'd be more berries, berry man. Coke is just a fucking waste, man, drug man. It's just for fucking dickheads to talk shit. 
Like, do you know what I mean? I'm fucking class. Oh, I just can't. Right. I never got the point of it. No, I never. Did you ever do a line in the bell? Oh, yeah. Cocaine dream. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I did like one or two years and years mm. and years ago. And I just didn't like it. No, I was yeah. like, this immediately just yeah. uncomfortable. It's mostly gack over here anyway. You're taking a fucking lot yeah. of shite. And he also says, Simon. Yep, he says, would you rather be stuck in an elevator with R. <laughs> Kelly or Puff Diddy Daddy? Puffy, I'd say uh, so I could take him. Or Kelly, he'd be trying, he's a big lad, he'd be trying to piss on me and shit. It'd be getting all the elevator, would be all filled with piss and stuff. Yeah, but R. Kelly, R. Kelly wouldn't really be interested in either of us. That's true. Diddy might Diddy. be. Yeah, Diddy or Diddy, Diddy, Diddy might be. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I, I don't know the full scale of that, but uh, I've been reading commentary mm. where people are saying this is going to absolutely upend the rap world. With, well, like they're, so they're naming some of the most famous celebrities you would ever hear about in your life and saying they're all complicit in this stuff well puff puff daddy uh like he was heavily implicated in tupac's death yeah so like <clears throat> al- like allegedly people say that he he was the one to put out the hit like he paid the the blood guys or the cri- crips i don't know uh he what, was, what, what would have hit. been his reason for doing that because you're more of a rap enthusiast than me bad boy bitches you know um hit him up by tupac was the reason but like tupac was just constantly talking shit about fucking up their bottom line you know and challenging them saying that they were rubbish i mean uh, hit him up like you listen to hit him up and the venom and that track i thought that they all were that like, was about puff daddy and biggie right oh sorry yeah bad puff boy daddy, murdered NWA on wax and, and killed puff daddy yeah, yeah fuck yeah. with me and get your caps pill pill and then p diddy was like grab your glock when you see tupac call the cops when you see tupac you know who shot me? You shot me, but you punks didn't finish. Now you're about to feel the wrath of a menace. And P. Diddy said, enough is enough. Uh, yeah, the, the guy that they've arrested for shooting Tupac, they've arrested a guy now in the last year. Um, yeah, heavily, heavily, heavily yeah. rumoured. Apparently he's a, quote-unquote, streets new. But that, he was um, going around, like, like, according to this, so like, shooting Tupac, all right. Yeah. Uh lot of gay sex with minors seems oh, yeah. to be that's not the lads who be out there everything in the coal mines yeah a lot, of, a lot of swinging with the white just just think it's like but it does kind of you know when people talk about those satanic <laughs> blood cults and all this sort of stuff you're kind of going like like i think there's a lot of like hollywood i feel is going to have a reckoning similar to what the catholic church had in ireland someone was saying that there's the higher up execs above diddy Mm. and they use all of those techniques like sex and drugs to control their artists so it's similar Illuminati so, type yeah so stuff, when right? so like you get big enough like say you come up the ranks and you're a puff daddy type of character where you come up the ranks you're business minded you're ruthless um they'll find a way to control you then so and that you're no longer like, competition because like and they, like Diddy was a horny bastard, so they're like, right, mm. sex, whatever, drugs, whatever you want, we'll and get if it. If they can't get you, then you. You yeah, know. if they can't get you, then you're... Well, like, look at Tupac, you know. No one was getting him. But even... And then he got shot. There's a lot of conspira- conspiracy stuff. And when I say this, I'm not saying it like I believe it, because uh, I don't. Uh, uh. But Chester Bennington, Chris um, Cornell, um, Avicii, he's yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, he's dead. A lot of stuff about, like, they were trying to, like, oh. uh, shine a light oh. on all the, the pedophilia of Hollywood. Oh. Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, yeah. all that sort of stuff, man. Yeah, like, look, the reality of it is it's a messed up place. Um, Bad lads. There's a lot of exploitation, but that that happens across the board. A lot of the time, unfortunately, it's with vulnerable people. Like, I mean, a lot of the people that get into, like, you know, pornos and all that, like, are girls that, young girls that are getting into drugs. And then they're like, oh, hang on, for, like, I'll get paid a couple of grand to take a bit of a mickey. And then once they do that, they're like, oh, I can pay for my habit then, cool. And then, yeah. And then, like, the, I don't think you, I think it's probably, you know, talking about education and stuff to maybe educate people on. And when I say this, like, you know, I don't say I'm a, I'm a hardcore porn user, but like, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think you really think about the life of the person that you're watching do these no. things. Um, because your head's just full of like, yeah. oh, like <laughs> fucking dumb, dumb sperm brain. But then, uh, there is, there is a part, like, as I'm getting older, I'm definitely feeling more and more uncomfortable yeah. about pornography. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. you th- think, like, of all, since, like, the internet got fast, mm-hmm. all the stuff you've seen, of all of that, was there ever any videos where, like, someone was just, like, that wasn't 
it was basically like an assault. Well, there's loads of that. Lord I'd, I'd say there's loads, but then you kind of go off like a, in some way on the very fringe of it. Then you would be sort of complicit because you had viewed it yeah, yeah. and whatever. And I'm like, that's a drop in the ocean yeah, yeah. kind of a thing. But it is, yeah, the older I'm getting, you know, now that I'm 40 and my dick is just shriveling. To be fair, away. though, it's not all, it, it is not exploited people. Like, that's true as well. There's legitimately true, people yeah. that are just like, They're yeah, just I'm it. comfortable getting me fanny out. But I think me most people, like, would, if, and they, they mind. if they could only have access to the videos where they knew that was the case, be like, yeah, grand. Well, if you, if, if everyone in the world knew that they were, say, guaranteed, like, 50k a year to, like, strum themselves a couple of times a week on camera, a lot more people would probably do it if mm. they knew it was guaranteed. I think it's the high Don't risk, know. high reward of OnlyFans, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like if you get into, if I got into OnlyFans and I knew O'Neal I could fans. wear like a dinner mask, yeah, yeah. you know, like that eyes wide shut <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah. And like they were just like, yeah, just Zorro. like, if I would let, la- yeah, if you go down like Zaro, I would let lads come on my feet <laughs> for, for like maybe not 50 grand a year. I'd have to get like, like whatever I make now. In my real job, I would, de- yeah, I'd let, like, once a day, a lad just comes <laughs> on my feet. I'd be like, yeah, class. Would you, like, how much money? No, I wouldn't that. No, I'm not cool with that. Dude. No, I'm not cool once with a lad chipping on my feet. Man. Once a day. I'm not, I'm not cool with it, but I'm saying, for if the price was right, how long does it take ah, a man to chip? He's just, like, five minutes every day. I'd be on there. there man. Be, and I'd make my feet all gnarly. Like, I wouldn't cut the nails, my little knuckle hairs and stuff. They'd be, like, rotten feet. <laughs> And I would find it's Marcus. Your, your fucking monkey feet. But yeah, I do the monkey baggins. foot like I'd spread it out like. Fingers. Oh man, no, Pretty I don't cool. know about that. But like, no, but I if mean, you're, if I if think your partner came to you and said, "I've had an offer to do all yeah. the fads every day. Hmm. A lad has to come on my feet." Is it me doing it, or is another lad? Uh, it's not you. Oh then, no. <laughs> no, it was me all along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no. but like no, so you would so like no, if it was a, what no. if it was you? Uh, maybe but they know, can see your face um, yeah. <laughs> sweaty you have to wear a birthday yeah. <laughs> sweaty <yeah. laughs> party poppers can you imagine just I think I nearly have it like uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I don't, know. I don't a, know it's an interesting question if you could like pixel out your face mm. and you just beat <laughs> off in front of a webcam one day yeah and probably get, like, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, but you have to say, like, when it's all over, you have to go, ooh, what a lovely tea party. <laughs> no, I think I'm right. <laughs> You're like, I'm on uh, with you until the yeah, lovely well, tea party. Yeah, I was on lovely. Um, no, um, no. I think that, I think that, like, yeah, to be, <laughs> imagine how much free time you'd have. Free time, yeah, yeah. loads of just Class, disposable cash. But that's what, like, you're actually better off, like, really and truly, um, supporting those people who mm, are like that's true yeah who are like you know what like if they even if they start a bit later in life like they're getting on the OnlyFans 30, 35 <laughs> it's you know, like, it's so like you're like you're during, support Mills even yeah, if you yeah, start, start Mills, Mills like, like you support Mills now yeah. like that's in a sense better because it's mm. ethical because they're comfortable there must doing be a it. terrible thing to have an OnlyFans and then just like nobody looks at it. Oh, it's, but now that's, that's peak tragedy. For all life, it's like there's all this for a tenner a month. You you're, and you're like escalating your behavior because be you're getting more views. <laughs> <laughs> I was more so talking like you know the principal of the school that your kid goes to is just with the only person. Yeah, you, you get like five views a video, and you're like, fuck, I need a bigger deal, law. Shit, do I need to piss on the dildo? What am I doing here? But how do you even find... How do you even dildos? find people on OnlyFans? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't like, know whether it's like... Out of curiosity, I just went into OnlyFans and I thought oh, yeah. it'd be like a Netflix True thing. researcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah, we need to talk about things on this podcast. <laughs> All about, yeah, yeah. But I did, like, they're like... I've never... That's one thing I would say. I've never... Outside of a Playboy I bought in mm. 2002, never I've never more. paid for... You're probably worse free. again then, because you're not even paying the poor women that are getting exploited. <laughs> So like you're worse again. Fuck them. Yeah, yeah. Do you pay for porn? No. Do you have sure. OnlyFans? Yeah, I'm on, like I have. You an are only an OnlyFans. I wear a cami costume and twerk. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Probably a market for that. Oh, there is. Yeah. No, no, that's what I do. And you have O'Neill fans. I think it's gone now. I don't yeah, think yeah. Al played for the but domain was, this year. But it was. I did have O'Neill fans for yeah, a while. Yeah. yeah so uh, to get the circle back there, um, I actually didn't answer. Or Kelly. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. didn't answer outside of Wexford where I live, and I would say Wicklow. Really like Wicklow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually closer yeah. to Dublin, so that's kind of handy. Yeah. Beautiful, um, beautiful place. Yeah, I live the up in the trees. I live up in the trees up there, mm. like an Ewok. I yeah. love it. 
Uh, I do really like uh, Wicklow because it's the best hiking in Leinster ish. Yeah. Really. So Lovely place. I, I like Lovely Smeal hiking. Uh, Big Bad Jar Rona writes in and he asks Rob, what drew you to support Chelsea? Did you inherit it? I assume he listened to me on that other podcast then. Did you inherit it? See a match, a great match, or is Chelsea a fashion choice? I will jar now. He's keeping an eye on me fashion. <laughs> he's taking note of my shoes and fashion, all. Fashion, fashion. Yeah, he's, he's going, it, oh, he? are they kill shot twos and all? I was like, oh, yeah, they are yeah, kill shot twos, yeah. yeah. um, So to answer that question, much like, so the, this is something that I've heard people talk about um, on Reddit and stuff like that. Ireland is interesting with football in that very popular here, like most people watch football, mm. I would say, in Ireland, but most people follow English teams. Yeah. So that's kind of an oxymoron in and of itself. There's a lot of, of it just mental the, gymnastics the going on. The level is probably so much better. The level's the higher and it's more exciting, yeah, for sure. Well, not maybe not more exciting, but the level's definitely higher. Um, and the reason why people support English teams, well, to be quite honest with you, um, there isn't really a reason. It's like some Irish people might say, my dad lived in Liverpool and sure that's why I support It's like, that's not if you're from Liverpool or you're from London and you hear someone say that's like go away you're not from here like you know because in in the UK especially in England like football well all over the UK actually football has a tie to where you were born right now there still is you will get the odd word off from London who's like I support Man United right and things like that that does mm. happen and that happens for the same reason that we support the teams we support over here i.e. you watch a team playing well when you grew up they're fun you just pick the, the team that you like the most mine was because my brother supported Chelsea um, and it was always a common ground to watch them with him basically and so over the years yeah even in the early days like when Zola Viali and all was there and then I, I was very heavily into Chelsea when it was like Lampard Drogba all that I got fucked off with football I think I talked about it in the early days of the podcast because especially as a Chelsea fan because it was less about the football and more about like what manager we're getting in, what transfers we're getting in, and what used to really fucking annoy me, and I see it happening now a lot lately with people watching football, is like a manager you really like get sacked mm. for like maybe just being maybe just having a small run where he wasn't great. Like like Ancelotti got sacked from Chelsea, really good manager, went on to be like Real Madrid manager, fantastic. Um and even like a Gus I think, which has another great manager, but like they all got, in my opinion, sacked prematurely, and that's frustrating when it's out of your hands. So uh, yeah, for a couple of years there, I was like, ah, fucking, I'm not bothered. Got back into watching football fairly heavily around lockdown, I'd say. So um, I've been watching Chelsea play fucking awful football <laughs> up until Pochettino, Pochettino came back there and not came back, but he, when he joined Chelsea, he was actually quite good. So yeah, I'm enjoying him now. They're playing good football at the minute under Maresca. Um, <coughs> So yeah, that's it. It's just that simple. Um, my brother, growing up, used to love watching Zola play and Mark Hughes. And so then I just started following Chelsea to kind of watch something with Roy. Me and Roy used to watch Chelsea together a lot. Um, Roy actually went to see him recently. He lives in London. Um, and as well, the Chelsea kit's quite nice. But Eamon, do you follow any sport beside oh. the beat em up boys? Anderson Silva was also my fave back in the day. And he had the best... Nickname because of the Paul arm legs, the spider. Yeah, yeah, I used to watch a lot of him. Yeah, you were a big fan of that. We yeah. both loved Anderson. Yeah. <clears throat> Aranya, which is what they call him in Brazil, is it, yeah? the spider. Yeah, Aranya. Um, yeah, I never like. Not I would like if I sat down and was watching basketball or football or whatever. I'd enjoy it. I don't mm. hate it. Like, but um, yeah, I just never had any connection to it. Weirdly enough, the only time that I wanted to support a team, I want, and maybe it's this links in with Anderson Silva and my wife. <laughs> I uh, I wanted to support Brazil because yeah. it was like 1990 or whatever oh, and yeah. I just thought they were class that's like, my granddad's team it's Brazil, Brazil yeah because they were and like he says it all ironically he's like <laughs> my Brazil are my team I didn't I, like, I, I didn't realise that I couldn't support them <laughs> yeah. I was well you can that, I was like Brazil are class and all and he was like yeah, but you can't like you're not like you can't just especially international teams yeah. right? well international um, yeah. but I always loved I think like the Brazilian footballers are, have always been or have always played at such a high level but yeah, yeah. So as a kid, but for me, one of the big things for me was when we watched. I think I called into you one night. Mm -hmm. We were watching Anderson Silva chase on, and we did, yeah. And it was when Anderson got destroyed. Yeah, the whole yeah. night. So when people were catching on, yeah, to his lack of wrestling, yeah, yeah, he got destroyed the whole night, and then got him in like a triangle, a triangle uh -huh. in the last like minute and a half. Uh -huh. And I remember, like, I'd always liked Anderson's highlight reels were incredible, and it was like. 
I don't know, I think at the time I was like had a big sad brain on me for whatever reason, for like consistent sad yeah. brain for like a couple of months or years or whatever. I think I did too. Yeah. Yeah. I think we were both in that in that area. Yeah. But uh I remember it really inspired me to be like, if this dude can get the shit kicked yeah, out yeah, of him yeah, yeah. for like yeah round after round and literally lose everything like yeah. he lost every round including the fifth but then managed to find a way to win there's some sort of weird inspiration mm-hmm. i took from that and i just always loved anderson's character as well because yeah, yeah. he was cool playful dude. and like mm-hmm. you know he's very goofy yeah. and fun um yeah so I, yeah so yeah mo- mostly it's just the the, the beat em up boys mm. which i also like that moniker yeah, and as well, um, for me with the football, uh, growing up, my dad's English, so like I watched England with my dad. Again, I've talked about this on the pod, and d- generally they're the team I support. Obviously, I support Ireland too when I'm watching them. Recently, Ireland and England played each other, and I was a, a neutral observer. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think if you're like, it's the same, actually, a lot of the best way I could explain it to people from the UK is like, a lot of people from the UK, especially people that watch the Premier League every weekend and all that, they will have an Italian team or a Spanish team that they keep up with. Mm. And that can just be from, they watched a good game in the Champions yeah, League yeah, yeah. and they enjoyed them. Like a lot of people supported Juventus back in the day. A lot of people have Real Madrid back in the day, mm. Barcelona. Um, and that's what it's like for us. Is like We have Wexford Dutes, shout out Wexford Dutes, they're our local team. They're actually doing quite well. I believe they're in the semi-final of something tonight maybe or something like that. Um but yeah, it's just for us, um, tuning into the Premier League is like the best thing that we can watch. Mm. Uh, most people yeah. here is like Liverpool, United, very few Chelsea fans, not very many Chelsea fans in, in uh, Wexford. I think I only know they, three, yeah, four. They don't, I don't think they really do. Like even with just televising Irish club games, yeah. it's not to the same level. No. There's not the same... Infrastructure is not there. Yeah. The money's not in the as mon- much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, um, true, true. I want to keep up with local football. I actually do. Like, and I wouldn't actually mind going and seeing a match sometime. It's just like a little, like a not bucket list maybe thing. Just go and no, just check out fun. the local yeah, team, yeah. just to be like, oh yeah, see what they're like. I've never actually went to see them live. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the crack. But it's kind of an interesting one though. Lisa McNeil asks, "This is uh, we're getting deep now. Do you think humanity is inherently good or evil?" I feel like we've been asked this before. Yeah, I think so. But, um, um, I think good. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the reason is that I don't think that our society could operate the way it does mm. if we were all inherently evil. Yeah. I know you can make the argument that our corporate structures mm. aren't always geared towards goodness, but mm. I think I think most people, they get caught up in a... You, you're not aware no. that like the thing you're doing every day isn't good in some way or you know you're trying to rob all the diamonds from Mm. from africa or whatever you're doing i think generally speaking people are we're good to each other when we're around each other more so we can have a weird thing with degrees of separation you see a lot on social media where you're able to almost disregard someone's humanity because they're on a different team to you Mm -hmm. Uh, and that goes for any team where you can be like you know <clears throat> you could say jk rowling should die because of her mm. beliefs or someone in the other camp might say some trans person or some mm. lgbt whatever person and like at the end of the day i think if you actually sit down and talk to people 90 percent of the time everyone's cool but that that separation on social media brings out the worst in us and a lot of it yeah separation is the right word because a lot of it is like you've literally just never had an experience with that type of minority that you're trying to single out like yeah, yeah. once you know <clears throat> one someone personally that has like that struggle or whatever you're like oh i can empathize with them a lot more now even if it's just you're just talking about like simple oh, sure. things you're not even talking about like like for example i'll give you a good example i'm just like a regular ass man fairly just straight down the line in terms of my opinions and all that yeah. I'm, not, I'm not too strong in either way but i was always a bit like with the whole trans thing a little bit like i don't fully understand it. like i don't know what way to take it or like i, I have my opinions on it that are probably not right things like that mm. but like recently enough i i just was in a situation where i was uh chatting to a trans person and uh, it was nothing about like, so you're trans, tell me about that. It was like just a regular mm. face-to-face chat. And you're like, oh yeah, that's like, that's someone that it's like... just a human. Like, yeah, that I would yeah. have like a lot of compassion for and yeah, I think yeah, they're cool. Sure. So like, once you remove this like, they're trying to use the other sex's bathrooms and all this, like that, yeah. that like, all of that drama that goes along with it you and see, all this stupid been, fucking shit. It's been shit. used as someone, there's a conspiracy theory out there that all this trans stuff and the sort of... Uh, 
I don't know, let's say, the, I don't know what we say, left-wing yeah. identity yeah. politics or whatever, that that's been brought in by the banks because everyone was so angry at the banks at the collapse oh, yeah. <laughs> that when they said they started to like you know put up the rainbows or whatever for their things oh, yeah. and then it starts to get politicized like you can have a fair so i think there's like here's the thing if you knew that giving a kid hormone blockers puberty blockers surgery whatever mm-hmm. would contribute to their life in mm-hmm. the future and would make them happier in the long mm-hmm. run, you would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that for that child. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is a lot of people, there's a lot of unknowns and no one seems to be willing to have sensible conversations where at the heart of it, it's like, I want people to be happy. I don't care if someone wants to get this stuff done to their body. I just don't want them to regret it down the line. Yeah, or, I think we've had this conversation yeah. before and I think I said to you that like in that scenario, <clears throat> you kind of have to let it play out in that way because a lot of the time, you're dealing with people who are like at the end of their tether mm, yeah. and intervention well, needs to happen. Yeah, absolutely. If someone know. is going to like, I think, I think there's, there's a few ways of looking at it. One is that like, if like suicide mm, is a very real S-word. possibility, sorry, S word is mm-hmm. very real. Now the other side is that like, you also can't use that possibility as an excuse to make that happen yeah. when you're not acknowledging the other side of mm-hmm. it. I think it's just like reasonable, rational, discussions and people will find they're at the same we want what's best yeah. for people we no one no one's like yeah. i don't want someone to have a beard and yeah. a dress it's no. you know like it's no no one cares about any of that we want what's best for people yeah. and if the whole species becomes kind of androgynous mm. and we don't like we're that's fine yeah as long as people are happy and it's for the good mm. of everyone humanity in my opinion yeah is is inherently good and i'll say that and what i'll say about that is even in societies where you're like like what you look back on as like the truly evil movements mm. of our times, like you look at like Nazism and things like that. Yeah. Like there was still loads of good people it, it, that existed within that evil yeah, shit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like and even was, at that, it's it's not, still shown yeah. true. It wasn't. It out. wasn't even like there's lots of cases where a lot of the Nazi employees, mm-hmm. if you like, yeah, we're, would try to yeah, help the, yeah. the, the prisoners. A lot of examples where some of the prisoners would yeah. become like yeah, Nazis. Yeah, yeah. You could say that that's sort of self preser- preservation yeah. or whatever. But um, I'd say it's like sixty percent good, forty percent bad. Like, I think, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think like, the, there's a lot of bad too. Like I'm not trying to say like mm, it's all yeah, roses yeah. and parts. Like there's a lot. There's a lot of bad. of bad, but I think ultimately society wouldn't work as well as it no. does if we were inherently evil. Well, like, we look at it like, okay, a good example is, like, the war in Ukraine, right? We're looking at that going, like, fucking evil bastards, like, why are they starting a big war? Like, why is that happening on the mm. European continent? It's fucking awful. Like, it's terrible shit. Like, what the fuck? And I guarantee you in Russia, like, there's, like, the equivalent of you and I just going about their day, having the crack, trying mm. to make other people's days better. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So it's, like, yeah. shitty fucked up people manipulate the, 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 the majority. But there's always good within that. There'll always be yeah. good within there. Like, they're, like, the average person in Russia is not a fucking evil zombie yeah. cunt. I think, I think what you said about 60-40 is kind yeah. of, a, it's intelligent as well, because, like, no one person is good or no. evil. No, we no, have no. We have very complicated feelings and emotions. Corey and Taylor desires. said today that Dave Grohl can be a good person and have a child outside yeah. his outside but of his But of thing. course he can. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like yeah. he like he did a thing. He likes a ride. Like, do you know what I mean? Which is one of the most human things to like. Yeah, hubris, but at the same time, you know. The fact that he got so far in his marriage without knocking yeah. anyone else up is like fact, pretty like, impressive. In a sense, I'm like, the amount of fucking hubbub about this is just stupid. I'm like... Did like, you know that again? Like, though? it is like, it is a bit salacious, like it is. Especially because Dave Grohl was like, rock and roll's good guy and all this blah, 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 good guy. Mm. The, probably not appointed by himself, by the way. Appointed by just people who were like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we yeah, think... he never said, no, no, I'm a good guy. No, no. But then so the other like, side of it is, know. imagine, right, here's... You're, you're, is you're, how, Tron is the how long is he with someone like 20 yeah, years something like or something? Like Tron is the opera with someone 20 years, maybe you go through a difficult period in yeah, the marriage yeah, yeah. over a two decade marriage, you're yeah. likely to. You have a big fight one night before you go out on tour. Yeah, you're two yop. people, your yap is full, yeah. your, your yap is yop. full, full bottle of yap. <laughs> um, you go out, you've had a big fight. Yeah. I mean, maybe he turned down a few women, yeah. but then the wife wasn't given uh, any ground, he wasn't yeah. given any ground, it got worse and worse. Maybe. Like, these things happen, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's right, no, it's no, like, of course, it's, 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 it's fucked like, up for her. No. It doesn't, it is fucked up. But, no, it's an awful thing, but, but it doesn't, happens. it doesn't dehumanize him, and no, it shouldn't. No, exactly. Like, I'm sure that dude has done lots of good too. Like, that's the, that's the thing. Like, like, it's like, you know, he's that child, yeah. Is gonna have loads of money, yeah. and even the fact that he came out in his statement is like, "I'm gonna support child." Yeah, yeah. 
There was someone did have a good <laughs> meme though because the Foo Fighters just uh, just cancelled the show somewhere, and the like the meme was like Dave Grohl can pull out what he wants. To, <laughs> which I thought was, was pretty yeah, good. That's quite good. Last but not least, good old Stephen William Marlowe has been with us a long time, as have most of these veterans mm. actually. Hi chaps, what's the most disappointing film album? Yeah, film and album that you've seen in hard, right? Cheers, yeah. Steve Marlow. Uh, um, album? We might have a Saint similar Anger. one. Saint, oh, yeah, Saint At the Anger. Time, yeah. Do you know which one really fucking annoyed me? And we've talked about it on the pod, and I thought you might say there was Puzzle. Oh, fuck. Biffy yeah. Clyro. Fucking wank. I think at least Puzzle <laughs> had a couple of songs that That's were true. Like, good. That's like, true. Like Saint Anger had nothing. Yes. <laughs> If I do that now, like um, yeah, Saint, uh, Saint Anger was dross. Yeah, I remember having that pre-ordered down in Go All BPM. So excited! Shout out BPM Wexford's mm. prim- premier <laughs> music shop at the time. Uh, me and all the lads had the collector's edition pre-ordered. It was the first Metallica album as young adults, <laughs> teenagers yeah. that released that when we were like like taken in music and it was their first like full studio album in that time and we were so excited and like i was a huge metallica fan and i got sent anger home and i was like trying to be like yeah, yeah. it's like sometimes a hip-hop like when you download like a new kendrick album you're like whereas like you're looking for the killer verses like not there, and, yeah. and the hard beat it takes a bit of time yeah you're, you're looking you're like head. oh there now track three has a class like you're like, all right yeah, okay yeah. you're like he's spitting on track three so yeah. all right class that was like it was like that Metallica. It's like where's the solos though? And you're yeah. like, oh, oh, why is this album? Why is this crap? That that yeah, that's a great candidate. Yeah, puzzle for me is really puzzle disappointing. Puzzle is up there because it was like Biffy Clyro were starting to cosplay as a pop band at the time, and like you know you had their first their first album. You could say was them trying to pander to the emo movement at the time, and so in hindsight you could look at that album two and three. Are yeah, so but that's, original for but what's that, going on at the time. Original, yeah. but also like you know you had the test icicles at the time. Yeah, yeah, you had true, a couple. True, true, you had a, yeah. yeah, you did you had have some of that stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. you did have that kind of uh, what would be the right word like screamo. It wasn't screamo, but it was kind of screamy, yeah, grungy, yeah, indie. Like yeah, yeah. But it was, was a, a cool term thing. On it. Like, I can't like, remember yeah. the name for it. Was that like new wave of like weird British shit that wasn't? Um, it wasn't fitting comfortably anywhere. No, it wasn't. Mm. It wasn't the indie like the sort of new wave indie Franz Ferdinand Kaiser Chiefs yeah, Like yeah, it yeah. was like a different, more garagey scene. Like some Black Party were kind of in between, but like, um, no, it was that album to me was just so disappointing because like Vertical Bliss and Infinity Land are fucking amazing albums. Yeah. Really good balance of like harmony, uh, melody. And then like experimenting and like mm. having like interest and heavy sounds that had m- melody as well. Yeah. And then to just put out puzzle, which just felt like phoned in. Was kind so, of, like, so lame. much. To your and then he started there. taking his t-shirt off and fucking running around. I like, was like, wearing shoes with no socks. Yeah, yeah. Like I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get so annoyed about that. Album. <laughs> but I think as well, like for me, the structures because <laughs> at the current time I was listening to Biffy Clyro, was listening to Myers Volta, yeah, yeah. and they're totally different bands. Yeah, but yeah. Myers Volta were playing a lot with structures, yeah, yeah. and it was effectively like a pop progressive. Or a rock song, yeah. progressive, but in a way where it took detours, yeah, but yeah. it had these really good yeah, hooks, yeah, yeah. and it was like it had everything you wanted yeah, yeah. for a really good song that was weird enough to keep you more yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah. And then when Puzzle came on, it was like they just reverted, to yeah, because Puzzle. Almost isn't bad if Vertigo, Bliss, and Infinity Land yeah. haven't happened. Yeah, yeah. But they have. It's black so it's like a then, step yeah. back. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and actually, it's a logical. Uh it's a, a logical step forward from Black and Sky, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like that yeah. that first album, like that um that first track on that puzzle album's gold. Yeah. Oh, it's really good yeah. with the orchestra. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's so a cool that. track. Yeah. I even there's when I heard that, there's about I was three like, oh, shit. good songs. Yeah. Uh, like Saturday Night Superhouse is just in and out like but yeah. it's it's good you know it's got like like some of the Tomahawk out because Tomahawk is yeah. a band that you wouldn't know what the fuck yeah. they put out they put out like a anonymous the Indian tribal uh-huh. music that mm-hmm. makes like industry it's just nuts you know mm-hmm. But even when they put like Stone Letter Stone Letter's like in and it's out it's like verse course verse yeah. course bang 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 um, but it's great because like that's nice to have in amongst a load of tracks that are mm. complex and, and and maybe difficult to listen to. But then puzzle, yeah, like that one. <laughs> I'm a fire yeah, yeah, and yeah, a burn, burn, burn. And a lot of people love that era of Biffy Clyro. Yeah, so yeah. like, 
you know oh, that, no, they, for, they did like, the right thing yeah, yeah. they went from oh, probably yeah. a band who made X amount of money yeah, yeah, to a band yeah. that made a lot of money it, it just felt like they were trying to do that yeah. and, and they did do that so fair play yeah, like yeah, I don't yeah. want to be the hipster going oh whatever look they had to go make their money you know for us at the time and I like authenticity in music you which I like authenticity in music. Yeah, I don't exactly. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't like it. Yeah, if it's if it feels just like just be pandering. a session musician almost. Yeah, no, don't add like because obviously you need to make your big money. The most disappointing film I've seen is the remake of The Crow, which I saw <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Which I like. The, <laughs> this is garbage, man. The Crow for me, like when I trash. I, yeah, I think I watched the movie when I was like a teen, uh, young teenager. I watched the second one first, actually. And, uh, yeah, just always liked it. Enjoyed it as a teenager. When I got older, then I, like, liked it more. Yeah. Like, I, I got it a bit yeah. more. Got the James O'Barr comic, which is, like, mm. seminal. It's, it's brilliant. And so I was always a big fan of The Crow. This movie, just every part about The Crow that makes you like The Crow is just not in yeah. this movie. It Like, if you just called it, like the lad who just went around <laughs> killing people it'd be fucking whatever yeah i was hugely disappointed and look i i, I almost feel bad because i know when a load of people come together and create something mm. you don't kind of want to shit all over it but like there was not one part of that mm. that i kind of went oh that's like the crow yeah. like uh-huh. it was just everything just the girl in a shelly and it maybe could make the yeah. argument is it interesting like, who cares like yeah uh, there's one part on it. It has some of the most violent mm. things I've ever seen in any movie. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Nice. So there's a part where Eric Draven, you know, has a sword mm. and he's like holding it sideways. Oh, yeah. And he, a fella is like going, oh, no, uh, and he's holding the sword. <laughs> and he just pushes it into oh, cool. his open mouth yeah, cool. and cuts it all the way back there. And his whole mouth <laughs> opens like some sort of, you know, little shop of horrors flower mm. uh it's some of the most graphic stuff i've seen in like an action movie it's just there's no chemistry between no. anyone and you know what was really missing wow in the movie the crow the crow befriends a little girl mm. and he has that kind of relationship with the with winston from mm. ghostbusters yeah. right and they do a really nice way of like they bring the pathos and the emotion mm. to an action movie mm-hmm uh there's no there's none of that here there's no connection of humanity there's nothing even the relationship between them seems tacked on like i've had fucking trysts that had <laughs> more romance than mm. there it just yeah it just doesn't work Skarsgård looks bored the whole mm. way through it i don't know there's just there's, it's yeah it's really it's a shame man because that's a thing that I think you could have remade something really special with yeah, it. Yeah. And even if you had it taken like Cure Air or one of the one of the subsequent graphic yeah, yeah. that used the cash just yeah, totally. But I it must have just lost money. Yeah, There's good. no way it good. made enough money. Good. That's uh, I should lose money. Yeah. Good. Um my most is point from Alien Covenant I talked about recently. Mm. That that's one of the only films that I've actually walked out of the cinema and went, What the fuck? Was yeah. like I was getting progressively more annoyed. That for me is the same anger in movies. I was like, Oh the fuck fucking fastbender. No regrets. Fastbender <laughs> making an alien fucking pose with him and all I'm like, this just shouldn't be happening in an alien film. Like I don't want like this yeah. is dumb. Like I don't I kinda this. like appreciate they tried to do some they tried something different, but it, it to your point it didn't work. I, I didn't like Prometheus either. Like I, I, I didn't mind Prometheus because it had that like intrigue, that like broad strokes yeah, yeah, of yeah. like oh what what can happen? But then like to follow it up with that where it's like yeah, we're going to kind of revert to what you know and make it like shit. It's like, all right, we're going to try and explain something that doesn't need explaining mm. and just annoy everyone. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. cool. Like, they should have never made... I'm glad they didn't make a sequel of it. I'm glad they went on the way they went because uh, that Alien Covenant is really good. Or not Covenant, Alien fucking Requiem. Is that what it's called? Uh, no, Romulus. Romulus. There's so many fucking... Ass to ass. <laughs> Requiem for an alien. <laughs> no, there is Requiem. There is an Alien Requiem. There's alien something Requiem. Alien versus Predator. Requiem. Alien versus Predator Requiem. Yeah. For fuck's like sake, sequel, right? these fucking names. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll leave it there. Um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed that episode, folks. Something a little bit different. Um, we do these every now and then if you're a new watcher and you're getting frustrated as to why we're not talking about why ghosts talking about and cryptids. But anyway, I've been Rob. Amen. Monster Fuzz, over and out. Bye. Bye.